For the past few days, we have been roaming the foggy forests in search of what is probably the strangest animal in the Rocky Mountains, the North American New World Porcupine. It is claimed that these animals often suffer from an aberration of taste, and we find proof immediately, the sign at Mylate, made of thick glue plywood. A porcupine has eaten half of it. New World porcupines are known to eat everything from telephone cables to car tires, and many a trapper can tell of his boots, which he put outside the hut in the evening and found destroyed the next morning. A porcupine must have had breakfast at my late, because under the sign we find some of its spines. It seems that we are in the right place. Porcupines are not rare here. We find their tracks all around. Large pieces of bark are missing from the tree trunks. The bark of conifers is the main food source of the New World porcupines, which retreat to the highest treetops during the day. High up, hidden between branches, you can hardly spot them. Therefore, our joy is quite great when we finally spot one of the animals climbing. The New World porcupines climb a lot. They do it all their lives, but they don't seem very skillful while doing it. They are peaceful animals, quiet loners. The key to their defensive behavior are the long spines. The sharp spines are an effective protection against all enemies. Their tips sink into the attacker's skin and the fine barbs dig deeper into the flesh with each muscle movement. Anyone who has once come into contact with the spines will henceforth let the porcupines go their way in peace. That is why the porcupine does not need to defend itself actively or to save itself by fleeing quickly. Excellently protected from their animal enemies, the porcupines lead a contemplative life in the treetops of the conifer forests. The oldest and written animal protection law of the white man in North America certainly concerned the porcupine for the old trappers and gold seekers declared it as lost man's food. Since the animals do not run away from humans, it is easy for any starving man to kill the porcupine with a stick. It is thanks to an unwritten law of the wilderness that the porcupines have been spared from the great killing that caused so many species to become extinct when the new continent was opened up. Unfortunately, Today's civilization is overturning the old laws of the wilderness. Decried as forest pests, the animals are hunted by economically minded forest owners. Under our film perch, a second porcupine waddles comfortably through the forest. The word porcupine is certainly based on French and means something like pig of the spruces. But our wanderer is in no way related to pigs. Quite leisurely and somewhat awkwardly, our porcupine climbs off its resting place. It is a young animal, born last spring. With its spiked tail it feels the position of the branches, because when climbing down the animal does not turn around, it always has to feel its way. As already indicated, porcupines are extreme loners. They almost always avoid each other. That's why we are following with excitement what is about to happen. The second porcupine, an adult, is climbing the same tree. We can't say whether this animal is the father or the mother of the young porcupine. At least they seem to get along. They don't bite each other, but they have a lot to talk about. The two porcupines sniff at each other extensively, and after they have made squeaking sounds to show not their affection, but their tolerance for each other, they go their separate ways. The old porcupine is certainly not looking for food. 
The nocturnal animals are now looking for a suitable place to sleep in the early hours of the morning. Most of the spines grow on the tail of the New World Porcupine. They sit loosely and come off immediately when they come into contact with an enemy. The animals can also strike with their tails, very dangerous for any attacker who wants to approach our two sleeping porcupines from behind.